Have you ever wondered how a tiny vial of spit or a simple swab of your cheek can reveal so much about who you are? From your ancestry, to your risk of developing certain diseases, to traits you didn't even know were written inside you, it all comes down to something called a genetic test. It sounds like science fiction, but it's actually science fact. Today, let's break down how genetic testing really works, step by step, in a way that makes sense without needing a degree in molecular biology. Right here on History of Simple Things. At its core, genetic testing is the process of examining your DNA, the unique code that makes you, well, you. Think of DNA like the instruction manual for your body, written in a language of four chemical letters, A, T, C, and G. These letters combine in different ways to form genes, and those genes influence everything from the color of your eyes to how your body processes caffeine. A genetic test doesn't read your entire instruction manual cover to cover. Instead, it zeroes in on specific chapters or sentences, particular genes or regions of your DNA that scientists know are linked to certain traits or health conditions. By checking for changes, also known as variants or mutations, genetic testing can give insights into your ancestry, health risks, and sometimes even how you might respond to medications. The process begins with a very simple act, collecting a sample. Depending on the type of test, this could be a blood draw, a cheek swab, or a small vial of saliva. Commercial ancestry kits usually go for saliva or swabs because they're painless and easy to ship. Medical tests sometimes use blood since it provides a very high quality DNA sample. No matter the source, all of your body's cells carry DNA. So whether it's a white blood cell floating in your bloodstream or a skin cell on your cheek, the genetic information inside is the same. This makes sample collection flexible and relatively stress-free. Once the sample arrives at a laboratory, Scientists need to pull the DNA out of the cells. Imagine your DNA as a tightly wound thread hidden inside a protective box. Specialized chemicals break open the cells, dissolve the protective proteins, and free the DNA. The result is a clean solution containing nothing but strands of genetic material. This DNA is then purified, stabilized, and prepared for analysis. Depending on the type of test, Scientists might need a lot of DNA, so machines can copy it over and over using a process called PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. This creates enough material to work with while keeping the original sequence intact. Here's where the real magic begins. Once your DNA has been extracted, scientists have to figure out what it actually says. The way they read it depends on how much detail the test requires. Sometimes, a very specific approach is taken. For example, if a doctor suspects a mutation linked to breast cancer, the test might focus only on the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes, zooming in on those exact regions. Other times, the analysis is broader. Consumer and ancestry kits often rely on genotyping, a method that scans hundreds of thousands of known markers scattered across your DNA. These markers serve as signposts, giving scientists a general picture of your genetic landscape without needing to read every single letter. Then there's whole exome sequencing, which concentrates on the protein coding parts of DNA, since those areas are the ones most likely to affect how your body functions. And at the most advanced level, there's whole genome sequencing, a process that reads nearly the entire DNA code, all three billion letters of it. It's the most detailed and comprehensive option available, though it's also the most expensive and data heavy. No matter which method is used, powerful machines take your genetic code and translate it into digital information that computers can analyze. 
This is where the raw biology of life intersects with cutting-edge technology, turning your DNA into a readable, usable language. After your DNA is read, scientists don't just sit there with a massive string of A's, T's, C's, and G's. Instead, they compare your sequence to a reference genome, a kind of standard version of human DNA. The differences between your DNA and the reference are called variants. Not all variants are bad. In fact, most are completely harmless and are simply part of what makes you unique. But some variants are known to increase the risk of certain diseases, while others might influence things like how your body digests lactose or reacts to medications. For example, a single change in the CFTR gene can cause cystic fibrosis. Another variant in the MCM6 gene can determine whether you can digest milk as an adult. These small differences can have big impacts, and genetic testing is the key to spotting them. Of course, spotting a variant isn't the end of the story. Scientists and genetic counselors need to interpret what those differences actually mean. This is one of the most important and sometimes most complicated parts of genetic testing. Some results are clear-cut. If a test finds a mutation strongly linked to a disease, that can provide a definite answer. But many results fall into gray areas. A variant might be classified as benign, likely benign, likely pathogenic, or uncertain significance. That last one means scientists simply don't know yet whether it has an effect. This is why interpretation matters. Without context, a raw list of DNA changes is just data. With proper analysis, it becomes insight, something you and your doctor can actually use. Genetic testing isn't a one-size-fits-all process. It comes in several forms, each designed for a specific purpose. Diagnostic testing is used when symptoms are already present, helping confirm or rule out a condition. Predictive testing, on the other hand, looks ahead, estimating the risk of developing certain diseases even before symptoms appear. Carrier testing focuses on whether someone carries a genetic mutation that could be passed on to their children. Then there's pharmacogenomic testing, which examines how genes affect a person's response to medications, allowing doctors to select the right drug and dosage with greater precision. Finally, there's ancestry testing, the type most people are familiar with, which explores genetic heritage and traits passed down through generations. While all of these rely on examining DNA, their goals and interpretations differ, making each type unique in the insights it provides. In the future, genetic testing could become as routine as a blood test during a checkup. Doctors may use your DNA profile to tailor treatments with pinpoint precision, reducing side effects and increasing effectiveness. It's a step toward truly personalized medicine. At the end of the day, a genetic test is like opening a window into your body's deepest blueprint. It doesn't predict your entire future, but it gives you valuable clues. Whether it's understanding your family roots, taking proactive steps for your health, or just learning why cilantro tastes like soap to you, genetic testing transforms invisible code into information you can actually use.